Hello, everybody. Let's start with our demo of the reconfiguration of a state mission replication protocol. This is about reconfigurable state mission replication in MIR. So just a quick, re uh, quick recap. What is MIR? MIR is a framework for implementing distributed protocols uh, that uh, we are developing at Consensus Lab. It focuses on consensus protocols. It is modular and flexible, and it's available under the link here. You, it's clickable in the version of the slides that uh, I linked in the Google Doc. It's a part of the Consensus Live Y3 project about scalable consensus that you can also check out. Okay, this is all repetition, so I'll go. I went through it fast. Now, uh, in this demo, I'll be showing reconfiguration. So. What is reconfiguration of such a system? I don't know what exactly the backgrounds are of the people present, so I'll uh, have a quick intro of, of what that actually means. So in a distributed system, usually uh, under reconfiguration, we understand dynamically, that means at runtime, changing the set of nodes running a distributed protocol. So we have some nodes or called validators in, in Lotus, Mm, that are executing some agreement protocol and then uh, we want to add some nodes while the system is running without disruption without disrupting the functioning of the system and we also uh, want to make it possible for some other nodes to leave uh, and seamlessly uh, transitioning to like new configurations the background of how that works in particular with our system so uh, state machine replication in our system is implemented like this. First, we have the mempool that basically stores unreliably incoming transactions. So all the transactions that are coming in from clients, they are uh, stored in the mempool, but uh, the mempool barely gives any guarantees about uh, whether these trans transactions survive a node restart or uh, basically, basically that's it, or some, some storage failures. So, this this mempool is kind of a best effort uh, pool of transactions. So from here, transactions make it uh, in batches to the availability component, and the availability component in our system it uh, is basically a reliable trans uh, uh, transaction storage. So it also executes a protocol, and when it receives a batch of transactions, it um, makes sure that enough other nodes reliably store all these transactions such that such that it's sure such that it's certain that uh, that these transactions will be available for anybody who asks for them when this availability of the stored transactions is ensured it issues an an availability certificate so for each batch it receives it uh, issues an availability certificate when these transactions are available but uh, it is not guaranteed that all nodes issue the availability certificates in the same order. That's why these availability certificates go to the ordering component of our system. And uh, it establishes a total order of uh, the availability certificate. So this is basically the consensus protocol, the core of the consensus protocol. This uh, thing agrees on the order of the certificates. And then when, uh, at the output of the ordering component, we get an ordered sequence of availability certificates. Uh, they go to the execution uh, stage, and at the execution stage, these availability certificates are transformed back to actual batches of transactions that are fetched from the availability layer. So each uh, availability certificate corresponds to some transactions. We fetch those transactions. We know that they are available because it's certified by the certificate. Uh, we get the actual transactions, including the payloads, and uh, and we can execute them. More in detail, what happens is when this availability certificate comes in the to, to the execution stage, it uh, it comes ordered with respect to other events that happen, and uh, our system works uh, based on what we call epochs. It is not the Filecoin expected consensus epochs. This, this is a different notion of epoch. And uh, so basically what we get here is certificates interleaved with new epoch events. All this is totally ordered. Then, as I said, we, we fetch the batches of transactions from the availability layer. And then 
uh, we have another ordered sequence of batches and new epoch events. And here, some of these transactions can be special configuration transactions. And this is where, which uh, this is what is uh, important for the reconfiguration that I'm, that I'm going to show. So some of these transactions are special ones that, that uh, change the configuration of the system. They are filtered out here. And uh, they're also ordered with respect to epochs. And then the system contains some, some configuration state. And when, whenever there is uh, a new epoch, all the configuration transactions are, they take effect and uh, all the components of the system uh, receive an event that uh, they need to reconfigure. And then that means that they need to create the connections to the newly coming nodes, maybe close the one to the old, call, close the connection to the old nodes and uh, do a bunch of other things that, that are required for, for the system to smoothly transition to, to the next configuration. And the transactions that are not configuration transactions, they're basically just application transactions. They are assembled into blocks and ships to actual execution. We dynamically change the set of nodes. This is this is what we will show in the demo, and uh, we will show it in a chat demo application that I was using also last time to to show the fault tolerance of the system. And then Dennis will show how this is uh, integrated into Filecoin and how we can add Filecoin nodes running near consensus and still reconfigure. All right. So here I already have prepared four nodes that are running a demo chat application. If I just run it, they have a configuration. They have some initial configuration. You can see here in the in the argument, it's a static configuration of four nodes that each of them loads to know how to connect to the others. For example, I can then this is a simple chat demo application. I can say hello from one node, and the others receive the message. If everybody says hello at the same time, or they, let's say they say hi, everybody gets the chat message in the same order. I modified the application such that uh, such that I can have special messages. When you type a special chat message, it actually is interpreted as a configuration transaction. And uh, I need to just tell the system which node and, uh, at, and at which address will be joining. So I have, I have another node ready here. So here I run the chat demo. I give it a new configuration that already includes the four nodes and itself. I tell it to use the leap P2P network transport, and I tell it I tell it that its own ID is four. So basically, each node can be at initialization can be configured with a static membership file saying that ID node with ID four, for example, which would be this node, is at this IP address at this port, and so on. Let me actually copy this because this will be useful. So I'll just run the newly joining node with the new configuration. And uh, here I can send a special message now st that starts like config and node. And now I paste the ID of the newly joined node and its address. It interprets the message as a new joining node and it's adding the node now this node it was complaining for some time that uh, it couldn't find the other nodes because they hadn't uh, talked to it yet but now the newly joining node downloaded the state the state con consists of all the messages that have been sent so far and can send messages like hi I'm here and all the other nodes they found it i mean so it's integrated in the system now so thank you very much